Well, welcome to another edition of Gone Again. In one of my last videos, I showed uh, how to install the solar panel up on top of the roof of the trailer. And today I want to just show you how easy it is to complete the wiring through the Renogy controller that we purchased and show you something else you can do with that controller that I think a lot of people miss. And in the meantime, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why we went with a rooftop solar in the first place. Just before we did our last trip down south, we bought this 100 watt Renogy portable, it's called a suitcase model, uh, solar panel. And it's working great. I mean, we like it a lot. And it made all the difference in the world between uh, having a laptop uh, running all day and uh, being able to keep our phones charged and keep the fan on in the trailer and everything. This bugger was like, it, it made such a difference. It was like night and day to us. And it's got its own, it's got its own um, PWM controller on the back, which is fine. Comes with this much wire and uh, we bought an extension so we could always have it out in the uh, sun even when the trailer was parked in the shade. That was great. But the problem we had was that uh, Linda and I never ever spend our days in camp. We're only in camp in the evening times. During the day, we're gonna go out hiking, we're gonna go exploring, we're gonna go visiting, we're gonna do something, but we're not sitting around a camp. And that meant that every time we left, we had to put the solar panel away to keep it from being stolen. That's not good. So during the middle of the day when we needed it to be out recharging the trailer's battery or recharging one of our power units or something like that, it was put away. So I made up my mind that as soon as we got back, I'd put solar on the roof of the trailer and that's why I did it. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, I'm installing this Renergy Rover 30 amp MPPT charge controller. I'd have to move this shoe tree. It's a pretty handy thing, but that's going to be in the way. Going to use this rubber plug. I'm going to drill a hole in it, and that's what I'll use to uh, protect the wires as I run them down through there. That way I can put a little sealant in it and seal it all up. By the way, I'll put a link to everything that I'm using in this video, the, the uh, uh, rack up there for the solar panel, the solar panel itself, the Renogy, uh, where I got this wire. And the nice thing about this wire is it's all tinned, which means it's not just bare copper. It's got a tinning on it. This is like aircraft wire. So this is not going to corrode. That's a nice thing about it. And it's got a double shielding on it. So this is good stuff. 
Well, yesterday I got the panel installed on the roof. I got the controller installed. It's all working. Now I got to neaten up these wires. That's about all I got to do today. When it comes to these tie wraps or wire ties, there's two kinds. There's the kind that have the eye and the kind that don't have the eye. And uh, we call them sighted and blind. <laughs> but anyways, then there's, the, then there's the other two kinds. The cheap kind that are made in China and, uh, and the better kind that are made in China. So make sure you buy the good ones. Because the cheap ones, you go to bend them and work with them and they just break. And they don't hold. Now I'm running the uh, heat sensor out to the battery. And then the last thing I need to do is fuse this system. I do have it hooked up temporarily right now and I'm being very careful with it, not to short anything out or anything, but the last thing I need to do is fuse the system. There'll be a fuse on the positive lead coming down from the solar panel itself. And there'll be a fuse right here on the positive lead going out to the battery. spring well there you can see it's putting out voltage there i got 13.7 coming in and that is such a good feeling when my last video you saw where i put the solar panel on the roof and you saw me running the wires down through the ceiling of the trailer here this is them coming through just a very simple installation nothing's hidden and the wires come right on down to the Renogy MPPT controller right here. But today I want to finish up these wires down here where the, the power comes in from the panel, where the power goes out to the battery. I need to put a fuse in here. And also, this has a load, the MPPT controller. I don't see very many people talking about this. So you got two terminals power in from the panel, two terminals power out to the battery, two terminals mark load and what that is is that is a connection between the solar panel and your whatever appliance it is that you want to you want to run without running it through the battery first today what i'm going to put on that load uh, on those load terminals is this uh, usb charging port with the uh, cigarette lighter port also which a lot of our our things run off a cigarette lighter um, power plug like that and this is going to go directly to those load terminals on the uh, Renogy MPPT controller. That's the idea. Let's get started. Well, the first thing I need to do is disconnect the positive lead from the solar panel down to the controller here before I even start working on it. Because I need to disconnect the power lead that goes to the battery. And Renogy says never have the solar panel hooked up without the battery hooked up first. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do here. Okay, time to neaten it up. What I just did here is I disconnected the power lead off this Renogy controller. And the reason I did that was because I needed to disconnect the lead to the battery so I could put this fuse in line. This is a 30 amp fuse. Now I've installed this fuse and I'm getting ready to neaten up all this wiring. Also here is a temperature sensor that goes down to the battery also that uh, monitors the temperature and uh, adjusts the controller in case the battery is getting hot. The next thing I'm gonna do is install this power unit or this uh, plug here for USB and for cigarette lighter that runs directly off of the controller, off the load terminals here. We'll check that out in a minute. There, that's a lot better. Still need to get rid of this shoe rack, but uh, <laughs> gotta understand it's been snowing until today. We'll get to it. All right. Now to install the load.
Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, for those of you that are just are curious and wanting to know what's going on here, the wiring just runs down here and goes through the floor. Comes out right there, but right below the controller and simply runs over to my battery, negative to negative, positive lead coming over to the positive lead. And then there's this cable here is coming in from the car hitch where I plug it into the car to charge off the alternator. And this cable here is going to the uh, power um, bus inside the trailer on the other side of the trailer where we plug in our, you know, our laptops and things like that to charge. This wire here is negative that goes to the frame of the trailer. And on my trailer, that just fastens right here to the frame. And you have to be careful with this because this is an aluminum trailer, so you don't want this copper eye fitting on the wire to be in contact with the aluminum of the frame. So I've got a uh, stainless steel washer underneath. So it's a stainless steel screw passing through and a stainless steel washer underneath. If you let this copper stay in touch with this aluminum, it'll eat a hole right through it because copper and aluminum don't mix. If you have a steel frame trailer, you don't need to worry about it. And this here is the ground wire going over to that uh, accessory bus that's in the trailer. So when my, I want to use this rather than just plugging in over on the other side, over here, coming through the battery after the solar panel. Well, I'm thinking that any time that I want to get the most out of the solar panel, like if that uh, if my lithium power bank is is low and I want to charge it really fast, and I've got good bright sunlight, I might want to go directly into that and get the full, you know, the full wattage out of the panel doing that. Other times might be when I've got that uh, Renogy suitcase hooked up to the battery already and I might just run a, want to run some other things off the rooftop panel without going through the battery. I guess I could do it that way too. My point was just to let you know that there is that load terminal on there that you can make use of in your own way. Okay, one thing you need to know is that this load output here that's going down into this, into this uh, outlet that I installed this is regulated, you know, from through the energy. This is regulated at 12 volts, you know, right around 12 volts something. But if you're trying to charge a Blue Eddy like this, and I don't know about the Jackery, but I know that this Blue Eddy needs 14 to 40 volts before it'll charge. So this needs to get hooked directly to my solar panel without being um, regulated in any way because my solar panel puts out between 12 and about 20 volts. So I need to go directly to the solar panel and what I'm going to do is is put a connection on the other side of this energy and I'm going to show you how I do that. These are the two wires coming from the solar panel. And what I'm going to do is right where they go into the panel is I'm going to I'm going to put a couple jumper wires in here with some MC4 connectors on it that'll go directly into the uh 8 millimeter plug on the Blue Eddy uh, power power unit that I've got. Okay, so that's what I had to do. I've got these running into the, uh, these are coming directly off of the solar panel terminals up here, where the solar panel actually comes in to the Renogy controller. So these are come these uh, MP MC4 cables are coming off before the power goes through the Renogy. And then it goes directly to the Blue Eddy here. This is the AC50. And now I've got a real cloudy day here, but now it's showing, oh, about 40 watts. And it's late in the afternoon. It's, you know, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. The sun's coming at an angle to my solar panel and it's cloudy. So this is, this is gonna be really good. Well, that was just an add-on to this video because originally I wanted to put in that, uh, cigarette lighter USB 
coming off of the load terminal of the Renogy panel here, or con off the Renogy controller, so that I could charge this AC50, this Blue Eddy off of it, because I thought that would be just straight from the panel. But then, you know, you gotta think about it. No, Renogy's not gonna put a load terminal on there that's putting out, you know, 20 volts or more, because then it would fry whatever you plugged into it. So it's gotta be regulated down to 12 volts. So that didn't work for me for this Blue Eddy. But uh, I just showed you now how, how if you've got a Blue Eddy or even a Jackery or something, and you want to come directly in, you just got to you just got to tap off of those where the panel comes into the controller, whatever kind of controller you have. You can tap off of that and go directly into your uh, lithium power bank. There you go. Now the next thing I got to figure out is batteries. What am I going to use? I've got the one flooded battery on here right now, just a lead acid battery. And I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. I may go to a pair of AGMs. I can't afford the lithium. I mean, $800 a battery is just ridiculous. I mean, this whole solar setup that I just put in was under $400. So I, I can't afford that. I do have the two lithium um, power banks that I've got that um, that Blue Eddy 500 watt one. And I've got that Sun Life 288 watt one. And that may be enough. I just need something that'll run a Dometic type refrigerator all night, uh, you know, when the solar panel's not putting out juice. That's about it. For this little trailer, I think that'll do it just fine. Well, when it comes to solar, I'm certainly no expert. If you've got questions, you just Google them, look them up on the interweb. <laughs> this was just a uh, video to show you how to do the physical install, kind of the technical aspects of it. And I hope it helped you in some way. And if it did, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.